Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I'm CCNA and CCMP certified instructor. On this video, we are covering CCNA semester 2, Routing and Switching Essentials. This is chapter 11, Network Address Translation. Section 11.3, Troubleshooting, NAT. Upon completion of this section, you should be able to use show commands to verify NAT operation. Now, when there is an IPv4 connectivity problem in a NAT environment, it is often difficult to determine the cause of the problem. The first step is to solve the problem is to rule out the NAT as a, as a cause. So if you have a problem and NAT is a part of that, that you don't really know if NAT is the problem or something else, maybe the routing protocol or anything else, then it's quite difficult to actually troubleshoot. So the first thing is to either remove the NAT and or be able to find out if the NAT is the issue. So clearly define what NAT is supposed to achieve as, as this might reveal a problem with the configuration. So you really have to understand how the packet is going to be translated, how it will look like in an inside network, how it will look in outside network, how it will look when it comes back and so on. Verify the correct translation exists in translation table using the show IP NAT translation commands. Use the clear and debug commands to verify the NAT is operating as expected and to see if the dynamic entries are, re are recreated after they are cleared. Review in detail what is happening to the packet and verify that the routers have the correct routing information. You can see, like for example, you need to, f to uh, f the returning traffic, for example, should not point to the inside network, the returning traffic of the router, they should know how to return it to the translated address. So clear IP NAT statistics and clear IP NAT translation, asterisk here, we clear on everything. Every translation that's happened and every statistics that's happened, we can clear. When we do this, they're not gonna clear the static NAT because that's always there. And then host 192.168.10.10 telnets to the server at 209.165.201.1. Show IP NAT statistics, we can see that we have one dynamic NAT and how many hits are there? 31 hits. And we can see the pool as well. Show IP NAT translations. We can see that is the inside local network. Our address has been translated to this inside global address. Debug IP NAT. When it becomes to this, when you start debugging NAT, you are in big trouble. <laughs> anyway, uh, what we see here is a asterisk here. This asterisk in here this will indicate that the translation is occurring in the fast switching path the first packet in conversation is always process switched this slower it goes to the cpu cpu will do the, the thing and then create the cache and then the second tap packet it will be fast switched s will refer to the as a source ip address a so source 192.168.10.10 this abcd to wxyz Value indicates that the source address ABCD is translated to XYZ, a WXYZ. So this 192.168.10.10, you can see the arrow there, has been translated to this address. And then we have a D, the destination IP address, refers to the destination IP address. Then we have the identification number. This value here will, uh, is the IP identification number. Might be useful for debugging in that enables correlation with other packets traces from protocol analyzer. So we can see the packet is being translated, this address is being translated, this address going to this destination. And then BES is coming back from this destination to uh, from this, from previous destination, now it becomes a source. To our destination, or whatever we translated to, we can see the arrow there that we translated back to our local, inside local address. Okay, thank you very much for watching my video and please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe. This has been Astrid Krasnici.